Hello and welcome my friends. It's banless season. Actually, banless will be out probably in a week or two or maybe three. Uh, I mean, it's supposed to be August, right? Uh, anyway, let's get right into it. Everyone is making banless videos. I'm going to make one too. Hey, am I going to add something new? I hope so. Let me know your thoughts about it in the comments down below. Let me uh, be flamed there. Let me be called biased and uh, stupid or whatever else. Insult me in the comments as well. Do what you have to do. And let's get right into this. Obviously, we, I think we're just going through the most important thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, we have to talk about uh, Snake Eye. Actually, I only put two Snake Eye cards on here. Maybe I should have added the others. But uh, yeah, we have looked at the OCG, or at least you should have. Because uh, yeah, they, they touched the Diabell Star cards, right? Wanted is at one or two, something like that. Uh, Snake Eye Ash is at one. Uh, does it matter? No, it does not. Uh, yeah, obviously with uh, Beatrice, right, you can still access whatever you want and we're going to talk about Beatrice in a moment. But uh, yeah, with the no Azami uh, Azamina cards or something like that, the Snake Eye deck just gets better. They they even, uh, like Temple, people are saying, oh, ban Temple or something like that. Or like, blah, blah, blah. No, but they don't even play Temple anymore. Or they say, oh, limit limit these cards. Blah, blah, blah. They they are playing, I think, two Poplar and one Flamberge anyway. Like it. It's not going to matter, it's not going to change the thing. I personally despise killing decks. But the thing with Snake Eye is, like, what the fuck are we even supposed to do? Putting all the cards on one is not going to help too much, right? They're just going to add more uh, new engines, right? If it's not Azamina cards, uh, then they might just throw in uh, the, what is it, the Fire King cards at that point, right? The deck is not going to die. If all cards are at one, uh, Effectively for the combo, they only need one anyway. The rest is just for consistency and uh, for like safety reasons, right? When one gets removed, banished or whatever. Uh, so yeah, um, I think one of them has to go 100% and that has to be the Flambridge Dragon. Um, Poplar obviously stops the one card combo shenanigans to some extent, but if we look at what one Flambridge Dragon accomplishes during the, the Snake Eye player's turn, and our turn, uh, no, that card has to go. It makes the deck way worse. And we're going to talk about Fiendsmith uh, later down, obviously. But uh, yeah, Flamberge has to go. Poplar, I think, can stay at one or two. Uh, let's put it at one. It doesn't really make much of a difference. But uh, yeah, in my eyes, Poplar can stay at three even. Uh, because without Flamberge, and then we're going to talk about some other cards, I think... Uh, yeah, Snake, I could be more okay. Uh, it's still going to be a strong deck and I don't want to make it like unplayable. I'm not going to be uh, like Konami and uh, hit like nine different cards from the from the archetype. Um, we're not going to do anything like that. So it's not like that. But uh, yeah, Flamberge Strike needs to be banned and then we're going to talk about other stuff. But first, again, I put the cards in here, kind of random. Uh, Shifter. Shifter has to go. Um, Shifter has to go for many different perspectives. Uh, first of all, it's in some cases even stronger than Maxi. And now people are going to be gasping, oh no, Maxi is the strongest card ever. Yes, yes, in most cases it is. Uh, but yeah, Flamberge, it, Flamberge? <laughs> Shifter is, uh, yeah, it can be even more problematic, right? Uh, they're printing more and more decks that actually benefit from their own cards being banished, right? We took a, uh, take a look at Ritual Beast, which, I mean, I think the deck is kind of neat. And uh, the deck is benefiting from Shifter, which is like, hey, good for them. Uh, there's also Weather Painter, which is, I mean, an older deck and not as good, obviously, but just one example that, uh, yeah, I have at the top of my head. There's the new deck, which looks really cool. Uh, Malice or something like that. Uh, also really good with Shifter uh, because they benefit from their own cards getting banished. So uh, yeah, it's not only a turn skip for your opponent, which again, most players, most decks can't play through Shifter. Uh, they have to pass or just uh, yeah suffer so much. Uh, yeah, again, I'm biased, I know, but the card just has to go. Uh, too many decks lose to it. Too many turn skips are enabled by this and it, it's just getting worse because the card gets better for more newer and com more competitive decks. The, the card has to go. Uh, limiting or semi-limiting, I think it's just cringe because it just increases the um, the sackiness, the randomness of the game, which is, uh, in my eyes, not a good thing. So uh, yeah, 
this card has to go. It's just getting stronger and stronger with each new deck that comes out. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Next, we're talking about uh, some... Uh, what? Uh, yeah, Tenpai cards, Sengen Kaiman and Sengen Summoning. Um, I'm not too sure if we need to hit both cards, which I think, by the way, these are the most relevant cards to hit. We could look at the dragons individually, right? The red one and the white one, um, in my eyes, are the ones that stand out there. But uh, yeah, I don't think they're that problematic. They're good cards. Obviously, Tempai is like the second best deck in both formats. Um, yeah, but I think the most problematic one is obviously the Sangen uh, Summoning. I think that card needs to be at one. Um, if we look at the OCG where Sangen Summoning is at one, um, yeah, the deck is still the second best deck. Um, and they have nine copies of Maxi, uh, which obviously helps going second decks like, um, like, uh, yeah, like the Tempai. So yeah, I think we can hit the deck a bit more uh, than you might expect due to the fact that we're going to get more Mulchami cards in the near future. So uh, going second strategies like Tempai are just going to get better, right? We have Corellia right now. And let me check the exact name, Fuwaros or something like that. Uh, it's going to come out in uh, yeah just a short time. It's already at like 50 to 60 uh, like euros, dollars per copy uh, in like pre-ordering. Yeah, that card is going to just improve going second text like Zempai even more. And as such, I think we can limit both of these cards. I would be okay with that. Yeah, actually, let's let's keep it at that. Uh, Sengen summoning, that card needs to be to one. That card is uh, just too much. Uh, these cards are so cringe, especially uh, with it with Sengen summoning and with the, uh, the the gimmick puppet field spell, right? These cards, or especially field spells that say, oh, we are unaffected, we can't be interacted with. Um, yeah, no, we want more interaction, not less. So yeah, that card needs to go to one. Kaiman, I think, could be at three, but two is also a fine spot. Next one, let's uh, go fast. Skill drain. Should be, should be banned. Should be banned. Especially decks like Snake Eye or White Woods are, uh, yeah, they, they just can't play this card for free because they can just remove it whenever the fuck they want. Uh, yeah, one is probably the realistic place. And uh, yeah, I hope we get something like that. Banning anti-spell. And uh, yeah, I, I just hope anti-spell is going to go. Uh, skill drain. Yep. Yeah, I think uh, this, is, this is okay. I think uh, this, again, is a good step in the right direction. More floodgates. Uh, yeah. We have these lingering floodgate traps, dimensional barrier and dim different dimension ground. Uh, yeah, these these lingering floodgate traps. <sighs> yeah, they they're not all right. They're not okay. We can talk about droll at this point as well, but I think Konami is too biased with hand traps, and we're going to talk about hand traps in a bit. But uh, yeah, these traps they need to go realistically, especially with Beatrice sending Angel of Blue Tears getting dimensional barrier even easier. Like we already had that with thrust, with prosperity, right? The chances to get dimensional barrier, for example, have increased from just drawing it if you side it in to nearly making it 100%. And with the Beatrice combo, if you want it, you have it. it this stuff is not okay. Um, they're obviously not going to do it, but like this, this, this should not be in the game, right? This is a one turn shifter. Uh, which like for many decks is like even worse, right? Imagine you go second, you already have a board established and then you also have to play through shifter. Uh, yeah, nah, this is like, this is the same issue with like people justifying maxi is okay. But the worst thing about maxi is if your opponent establishes their board and then they activate maxi on top of that, which yes, you can say that is the worst part about maxi and uh, the different dimensional ground is literally the same thing with shifter so uh yeah these cards it's, no 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 it's just turn skips no it's not good anyway let's keep the floodgates in the forbidden section i talk about crossout i personally think crossout is an interesting card um we have to um keep always in mind the current format and like what Yu-Gi-Oh is like overall with uh, some of these cards that we're going to talk about today. And Crossout, I think overall in Yu-Gi-Oh, I think it's an all right card. Sure, the idea of helping going first is not the best. It's not the best. Going first is already very, very strong. And I don't hate going, uh, I hate that fact, honestly. 
I think going second and going like turn zero and stuff like that, that should be improved. Going first, nerfing it, we'll have to see. If there is a good suggestion, we can go with it, but so far, like most of them are kind of cringe. Regardless, a card that helps going first is yeah, not that great, uh, especially nowadays uh, with the current format. And Crossout obviously popping off right now because everyone plays like up to 23 hand traps in some decks uh, you can find online for like these top events. That's not okay. That's a problem with hand traps, which also should be looked at if we're being honest. Hand traps being too strong, one card combos being too strong. There's a lot of things that are uh, array, which is why we need such a nuke ban list right now. And Crossout, I think banning it is cringe. I think Crossout has a space for certain decks that are very reliant on getting their one card through. Um, I don't know. First example is obviously Synchro or Genex with their uh, what? Oh fuck! What is the Genex card? The, the Genex Link One Recycler or something. And for Synchro, it's obviously Junk Speeder. Um, these decks obviously are not meta. These decks are rogue at best. And if their one card gets through, they can do something that's often pretty good. Sometimes it's not. So these decks having Crossout is, I think, for, like completely okay. Uh, but yeah, cross out right now is just doing too much. Funny thing is you can cross out your opponent's skill drain. So, I mean, that's at least something. But yeah, cross out is even stronger than uh, what is it called by right now. Especially due to the fact that everyone is playing like the same hand traps. So if you uh, caught by your opponent's ash, the ash in your hand obviously like doesn't work. So yeah, cross out is even better in these cases, which is an obvious thing, but that's not lose sight of that. So yeah, cross out, I think the card needs to go to one at, at most. Uh, it's already at one in uh, the OCG and I think in the in Master Duel. I sometimes mix that up, but yeah, this card needs to be at one. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. Next card, next card that I also like, Proof of Prosperity. Uh, again, I don't like randomness, even though I'm a tier player. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't want to have games where it's like, oh, I bricked, I can play. Uh, I hate that for myself and for my opponent, right? We want to play the Yu-Gi-Oh, not just pass and go next game or some bullshit like that. And cards like Proud of Prosperity, uh, the original idea, at least in my eyes, is hey, I'm, hey, I'm looking for the cards that I really need. I'm looking for my popular or whatever, and then I can play. Um, sadly, that's not really how it's used most of the time. Most of the time it searches blowout cards, especially after siding. And uh, as long as these blowout cards are in the game, Prosperity just is degenerate because it's not... We don't have th just three copies of Skill Drain. With Prosperity, we actually have six. Uh, and then we can talk about combos that get you Skill Drain as well, but let's leave that. So uh, yeah, it just means that you have six copies of the degenerate side deck card that you have put into your deck. So yeah, Prosperity needs to go to one at least. Uh, it still helps with consistency, especially for like weaker decks um, that already like have consistency uh, problems. At least leave it at one. And now I'm going to go about some extra deck cards. Uh, I mean, Apo, IP, SP for some. Uh, people have called for their bans, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's just uh, I don't want to be this like uh, mm, actually mm, I'm super smart. Everyone is retarded. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's just obviously not true. I'm just going to share my point of view, which is, uh, yeah, that these cards don't need to be banned. I think in comparison, especially to the last bans of Savage and uh, Baron, which I still th think like Savage shouldn't be banned, but okay. Um, yeah, I, I think like these cards are massively weaker, especially, I, let's talk about IP first. IP, when, when was IP a problem? Is IP a problem because you can go IP into SP? Okay, that's very strong. We agree. But how often does that actually happen? Not that often. I mean, honestly, it happens often enough. But the thing is, it's mostly a Snake Eye Flamberge thing because IP is getting yeah summoned from the Spell and Trap Zone and then does her thing. So, uh, again, like how often did this card come up in the last couple of formats in... What is it again? Unchained format? Okay, here and there. Here and there. In Cash Tira format? Nowhere to be seen. In Tier format? Nowhere to be seen. Sure, in Sprite format, which we had for a couple months, that card was quite there. 
But uh, was it the worst thing? Was it an unfair thing? Absolutely not. This thing is just strong very, uh, right now due to the format. And the problem, I think, again, same with the last bands. Uh, sure, we can all agree that Baron is very fucking strong and probably uh, should have had some restrictions on her. But why was Baron and why were Savage problems? Because they were cheated out so easily. Same with, by the way, Beatrice. We're going to talk about it in a moment. This card is very strong, yes, but it's a problem right now because it's free. Because you just get it like that. You don't have to work for it. And sure, many and more and more decks can generate bodies very easily. Which makes link, sp link plays even easier and, well, more free and more accessible. And as such, they're not as much of a hurdle to overcome to variant strong effects. But these effects are strong, but are they unfair? Are they giga broken? They are not. Would the game be better without them? Uh, the question is like, what is the end board that you're going to make in most cases if you don't have an in-archetype boss monster? This is again the same thing as we had with Baron and Savage last time. Sure, the meta deck Snake Eye, which is completely busted in its own archetype, the own, in own archetype cards are what is in my eyes the problem, not the end board they generate. The end board is the symptom of an overtuned engine. Not the end port itself is the problem or the end port cards. The end port cards feel oppressive because they are always there, because there is 120% consistency on them, because they can be recurred and so on. So if Snake Eyes is not all too relevant anymore and they're not throwing out all these bodies as easily, will they make Apo every turn? Will they make more than two material Appaloosas? Will they be able to make Apo, IP, Omni from that, Omni there and uh, SP as well? No, they're not. So the thing is, if we get into a different meta, which that, sh is, that should be the goal of this ban list, right? To kill Snake Eye and then see what happens then, right? What happens then with Yubel, with Ritual Beast, with fucking Runic decks and obviously Tenpai, right? Um, that, that should be the goal, right? If we, if Snake Eye is not the most prevalent strategy anymore, if we took a look at the other decks, other like tier one decks right now, uh, is Tenpai making Apo IP? Not really. Is Yubel doing that? Well, mm, sometimes, but that's not their main win condition, right? It's just something that they do occasionally. So I think these cards do not need to be banned like at all. Are they strong? Yes. Are they overpowered? Not really in my eyes. Would the game be better without them? I don't think so because I think many decks would not be playable for uh, yeah this is not for the big tournaments where they don't even show up but for like local scenes or for like the smaller communities I think like some of them would suffer somewhat uh, if another bulk of generic extra deck boss monsters are getting banned. Now that was something and again you are going to disagree with me but uh, it is what it is. Next thing we might disagree on, Bistral Druid's Worm. Uh, yeah, that card is already very strong. Do we want to have it at multiple copies? I, as a tier player, am biased, but uh, I'm also a Dragon League player, so uh, hopefully that cancels each other out. But I think Druid's Worm is just a bit too much. Magnemode at one, I think that's okay. The other Bistials are strong, but manageable, right? Uh, but yeah, Druid's Worm being... Uh, like a generic hand trap to like in many side decks in my own tier side deck for example that is maybe a bit too much obviously uh, the reason for its prevalence is uh yeah something called fiendsmith which makes sense but yeah i think Drew's worm is a bit too much and uh, i think at, at one i think he's in at one at master duel and in the ocg as well i think these uh, other formats know something that we should maybe look into no Let's get to the big part, Fiendsmith. The question is, how are we going to hit it? Because the Fiendsmith cards, as much as like Fiendsmith Engraver needs to be put to one, um, yeah, uh, I mean, that would be the easiest solution. I think one Fiendsmith Engraver makes this uh, very easy. But yeah, they're not going to do any of that, which I mean, is understandable from a business perspective, but yeah, yada yada. Uh, let's, let's take a look. So we have Lurie, which is the easiest decision. Ban Lurie, the one card combos completely like fall flat i think or at least some versions of them uh there obviously also are like combinations with the uh, new <laughs> tcg exclusive uh fusions 
but yeah, Banding Lurry, uh, Fabled, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know if the card is all that relevant for your archetype, but I, I, I assume so. Uh, yeah, I mean, Lurry should be the easiest ban, Beatrice should be another easy ban. Again, sad for every deck that uh, like actually had to put in some effort to generate her, right? I remember um, some zombie decks in the past years are really rogue level, right? That used her or I don't even know. It's just the card obviously has, uh, yeah, found many uses outside of the original Burning Abyss archetype. But uh, yeah, it's, it, it has to go. It's sad, but it has to go. It's just with Fiendsmith, every deck can make a... Omni mill, that's just too strong. Uh, next card in question, right? If we ban Beatrice, then are they just going to make High King Caesar? Probably. And a two times special summon negate. That is also, I think that is like kind of too strong, but I don't think uh, we, we need or should ban this card yet. Uh, yeah, I mean, limiting and semi-limiting makes no sense. So the question is, is it at three or is it at zero? Uh, it's a hard decision for me because I don't think they're going to do it, but is it really warranted? Is a two times special summon negate warranted? And honestly, I think yes. I, I think if you get these cards, right, these cards were fine back then when they were printed and they were also fine. Uh, I mean, they were strong, but fine because it took effort, right? Like tier limits players for like half a year or so played fucking malicious at two copies in their deck. Uh, and the like, dangerous and all that stuff to make Beatrice, right? They were jumping through all these bricks in their deck to get to an Omni Mill and uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's rough. But these three cards, I think, uh, would help a bit because what's the next best rank six? I have bought some uh, to to be sure to uh, be active at that time, so I'm not going to spoil that yet. But yeah, the, the quality of rank six is, is going to go down, which then you might say, okay, then they're going to use this as link fodder. We'll have to see then. Next obvious ban uh, or way to stop the Fiendsmith stuff would be, uh, yeah, the Closed Heaven, which I think is pretty sad because I like these, uh, yeah, Closed Heaven, Closed Goddess and uh, Closed Sky, whatever cards. I think they should make an archetype of this more because this like linking away your opponent's monsters like Super Pulley style or, I mean, obviously Rage, right? Uh, I think that's like an, an interesting way to go about it, right? Interesting removal. Uh, maybe it's a bit strong, um, but hey, it's something that we could look into. But regardless, um, this would be also a free way to stop uh, most of the Fiendsmith parts, right? Because yeah, now two bodies on the field aren't Fiendsmith combo. So um, I think uh, if we look at these, do we need to hit all four of them? Are they going to hit all four of them? No. Um, Beatrice, I think, is a 100%, and then uh, DDD is very questionable. I think it's either Lurry or uh, Moon, and I think Lurry is going to be a hit, but that's not going to be helpful. Moon is the better hit, but uh, yeah, is Konami going to ban a card out of the most recent set, right? Uh, who knows, man. Next, the u cards, right? It's going to be tough because I'm obviously very biased towards the stack waited for support for 15 years now the deck is meta which is scary it's the same thing with tier elements all over again you look at the deck it's great you have fun with it and then suddenly it's the strongest deck ever made and it's going to get absolutely murdered on the ban list um, it's good when your pet deck is playable but uh, yeah obviously not to this extent uh, yeah i think thrown to one well actually let's talk about uh, Ubel for a bit Ubel actually has crashed down and tops and popularity as well and uh, yeah there are some reasons for that obviously people are more prepared and the second thing is obviously people have looked at the ocg and in the ocg Ubel is uh, yeah dying to, to some extent right let's not be overly dramatic but yeah the next mold charmy card is very effective at dealing with it right Ubel already kind of has to summon a lot to actually like stop their place that was already kind of iffy against Maxi. Then they got the, the Phantom of Ubel, which can help with that, but not in all cases, right? And then they added a next Maxi. So yeah, with six copies of Maxi, Ubel is just plummeting in the tops uh, as far as I've seen. So um, you could 
say, okay, we need Yubel hits right now because if Snake Eye gets hit, if Tempai gets hit, Yubel's just going to be the strongest take uh, around. And I think that's true till the next Maxi card comes. So we, if we're looking into the future, I think we don't need to hit Yubel all too strong. I think maybe limiting Nightmare Throne, people have said the card is way too strong. I think the card is very strong, but I mean, it, it's not unfair it's not saying oh you can't interact with me or something like that uh but yeah clearly hitting that making the turn one combos relatively weaker uh that could be a way phantom of Ubel to one uh, i think that would be a bit too much i think to two is okay uh that means that people like that you have to think about it right people are like summoning one as an extender and then summoning one for their end board for example um which I think, like, obviously that's not the intended way. Uh, if we're being honest, this card should say it can only be summoned, like, once per turn or something like that. Uh, that should that should have been on the card, but it, it is not. So, um, yeah, people are using it as an extender. But if you only have two copies, I think you have to be a bit more careful in using your copies in your first turn right so you're not going to be too willing to use one of your precious copies as an extender uh it would be more easy to just put it to one but i think that would be too much of a hit um right then we can't hit anything else from you bell and uh, just i don't know if that is the way to go i think throne to one phantom to two keeping spirit gates and yama which people have said like Yama to one, banning Yama, I think that's all too way excessive. Uh, Yubel is not an unfair deck. Uh, the interactions aren't negates, right? They have two negates, Phantom of Yubel, changing the effect, right? Kind of a negate. And then Verudras, if they get to it, if they get to it. Um, that's just the Yubel parts, right? We can't complain about the Fiendsmith parts because that is not a, an issue with Yubel. That is the Fiendsmith engine, right? So we can't talk about Dies Irae, uh and all that kind of stuff because that's not like if that's on the new bell end board that's not you bell that is fiendsmith right these cards could be on the end board of any deck that ex includes uh, fiendsmith cards so uh, i think we have to differentiate that a bit so i think you bell should not get hit as much uh, i think one limit and a semi limit is all okay especially considering that the deck first of all is not completely unfair Second of all, that it's Fiendsmith that is doing the Omni Negate shenanigans. And third of all, that it's going to get a lot weaker with the added Maxi in the new format. Now let's pick up the pace, hopefully, because, uh, yeah, I don't want to make it an hour long again. Uh, Gamma. Is that one? Maybe put it to two? Like Gamma to three, I think that would be a bit too much, but we can look to Gamma to two at some point. Maybe not in this current format with all the hand traps, but I think maybe... Maybe it's like it's okay at 1-1 one, one with the ratio. If people st stop playing that many hand traps, I think we can go back to like at least to 2. But right now Gamma is, uh, I think it's okay at 1 even though it's just, it's just cringe. Anyway, change of heart. We can keep it right here because I think we can free change of heart, right? It's at 3 in the OCG and not doing anything. Um, well, I mean, it's being played here and there, but it's not a... Uh, a super problematic thing which is i mean it's fucking crazy to say that change of heart at three is something that uh yeah is, is the thing in 2024 but well i think here we are i think freeing up the man list is like something that we should take a look at with some of the extra cards here um but yeah change of heart to three i think that's okay um right people are already playing change of heart snatch deal talents is like the same so uh, yeah i think Change of heart to three is something that we can do. Uh, same with Pankatrops to three. Uh, there's going to be, a, I think, QCR version of him in a month or so. Five weeks, four weeks. Uh, yeah, they're going to print a QCR Pankatrops in the tins. I think, uh, yeah, people want to buy him. So force people to buy three copies of him. I think Konami would just uh, love that. Uh, and yeah, obviously in a world where Fenrir is around, I think Pankatrops can be there as well. Um, next, obviously, yeah, we have to mention it every time. Uh, Calamity, sorry Centurion players, I think your deck is pretty cool. Would be cooler if it wasn't going to go for like turn skip floodgates. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just stupid. It's not a problem right now, but uh, 
Why the hell should we not ban the card at any given opportunity that we have? Master Duel has banned it. And it's great. It's great. Next thing, Sanctifier. Master Duel has taken the wrong S step. Uh, it's still an issue, right? People are now summoning cards like Ras Disciple. Uh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter that you ban, uh, what is his name again, Ido or something like that, and the Puppet, uh, the Nightmare Puppet, of course. Um, sure, it helps, it makes it better a bit, but not by a lot. Sanctifier, it's it's the same with many things. Let's complain about the, uh, what is it again, the symptoms. Let's complain about the end port, not how the cards got there. Uh, yeah, it's the same thing. Sorry for the branded players, right? I know life is not the greatest right now for you all, but uh, yeah, you wouldn't be beaten up on the playground as much if Albion the Sanctifier Dragon was just banned and you wouldn't be forced to floodgate people, right? Your deck is already strong enough, right? Maybe not the best right now, but your deck is good. It's packing a punch, especially in the TCG, bro. You have like three branded fusions. Like be happy. Don't be forced to sanctify stuff. Again, it's it's an arms race, right? If you ban one thing, you they're going to play the next one. If you ban that, they're going to play the next one, and so on and so on and so on. It's just stupid. Now, uh, yeah, <laughs> spooky dogwood right now. It's just uh, people have figured it out, and uh, yeah, I think uh, people were already warning about this card uh, like a couple years ago. But uh, yeah, in the current format, it's just it has taken uh, too much of uh, a spot, right? Uh, the time rules are needed, but they are cringe anyway. I think we need some adjustment to that. The life point being the measurement for that is a bit wild, but well, it's one option, right? And uh, yeah, in game three or in a late game two, activating this card is uh, either a turn skip or you just win because you can't OTK through like Dogwood, right? Uh, I mean, like I have not seen that one yet I think so yeah this card uh, it's harmless it's harmless right it's nice for like oh I want to survive or I have a deck that pays life points and I want to get life points back or something like that uh, <laughs> but yeah nah this, this card needs to go uh, it's just it's just silly right the tar the card is not too strong the card does nothing effectively right because life points doesn't don't matter too much honestly but yeah with the current time rules this card is too strong um yeah we can talk about hand traps but i think this might like be too much for this video uh ash blossom here is just this like one example for all of them and i think we need to have a discussion at some point in the Yu-Gi-Oh community about hand traps right obviously they're the tool of the going second player uh, but it's not like the going first player can't activate hand traps, right? The famous example of Maxi uh, using it while going first. Uh, yeah, and the same is for hand traps. Also hand traps, right? It's just shitty deck building is being uh, done with them because hey, we play 20 hand traps and everyone plays the same hand traps because the same generic hand traps are good. And like people complain about the, like the generic extra deck monsters that everyone plays. Is someone complaining about the generic hand, uh, hand traps everyone plays? I think not. Uh, I think hand traps need to be looked at and I think Konami has already done some good steps in that direction. Obviously the Mulchami cards are not one example of that, but the uh, Dominus Purge and the, uh, what's the next one? It's not released yet, but it's Raging Abyss or something, right? There's going to be another one that's already seeing some play in the OCG uh, exclusive. Uh, hand traps for some uh, attributes. I don't know if attributes, if I like that too much, right? Because just the hand trap alone can be gatekeeping for some archetypes or something like that. But regardless, it doesn't really matter. Something like that, exclusive hand traps that not everyone, not every deck can play and people, no, 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 no. <laughs> Shifter does not count. Shifter is not a good example of that, but uh, yeah. Or in archetype hand traps, actually, like Halfness, for example, is the one that immediately comes to my mind. Or isn't Mercuria also, like, does Mercuria, like from Randed, right? Does that one also count as an in archetype hand trap? I guess kind of, right? Um, cards like that, I want to see more of, right? Uh, because hand traps, is it's the same with the extra. Like everyone complains about that being the same, hand traps also being the same is shitty, and uh, yeah. Maybe hand traps are also like too strong, too weak. Uh, 
right? If we have in archetype hand traps, we can make them be beneficial, right? What is great about uh, going first? Okay, you can establish your board and so on and so on, and the opponent can't do too much. Hey, but the, what if we introduce in archetype hand traps that I activate? Oh, like the bestials, for example. Okay, I mean the bestials are like kind of, right? They don't do too much, right? They just summon themselves after banishing. Sure, nice. But what about cards like Halfness again? It's like you summon them, you don't negate because negates is there. Uh, but hey, you mill three and then you do your Tillerman stuff, right? Turn zero. Obviously, Tillerman's maybe was a bit too strong, maybe a bit. Uh, but yeah, stuff like that. Uh, that's like, I think, cool, right? Because then we don't have, we move away from like my turn, your turn. And I think our turn is the future. Uh, sure, some people, and I guess in some games or like some decks, I prefer. It's like I'm my, my, doing my turn, I do my stuff and then your stuff, which there is a place for that. But I think for like, uh, like some newer decks and the upper echelons of like high tier play, I think uh, going into more interactive games with like turn zero being the focus, I think that is the way. And I think that is being facilitated by more in archetype hand traps so that we can either get rid or that we don't need to have more of these or like most of these generic hand traps around all the time. Because yeah, it's just, uh, first of all, again, I'm not repeating myself. That's just my take on that. It's not the time yet, but uh, just my two cents. And uh, more two cents, Protoss, uh, did we need to release that? Obviously we did not. Colossus, uh, it's not seeing as much play. But yeah, Colossus could also, yeah, actually Colossus could also be here. But uh, yeah, we've seen more Protoss being played, especially with the, what are they called again? Ritual Beast. Uh, sure, if we ban Protoss, wouldn't they just go to Colossus? Fair point, fair point. Maybe we should add Colossus here as well. But uh, yeah, I think Protoss is also stronger than Colossus. But hey, uh, yeah, Protoss is like, sorry for the uh, uh, Soul players, right? We took Baron away from you and now we're also taking Protoss away from you, but uh, your deck is going to be more based without the stun card anyway. Uh, maybe release better like Synchro Monsters in the future, Konami. Anyway, hey, don't mind me putting grass there. <clears throat> uh, yeah, just for some fun. Uh, but yeah, honestly, now we're talking mostly about like releasing cards from the bandless, and I think grass at one um, is just okay. Sure, some decks are going to be like degenerate piles, but are they going to beat out Snake Eye and like some other stuff? If we look at the other formats, the answer is no. Uh, I think Grass could be like back to one. I think it's going to be interesting. If it's too much, we can ban it immediately. Um, honestly, I think it's okay, right? Next is the Zodiac cards. Zodiac cards are strong. <laughs> There's a reason why uh, Rapier is still at one and three of them are banned. They released in Oh, let me don't uh, let me not say anything wrong. Was it like 2016 or something like that? Uh, yeah, I was still a bit gaga at that time. So, regardless, uh, Rapier said one. We, I, I, th I think we could at least give them two, right? Um, summoning multiple of them. Um, so, in case you don't know the effect, right? If you use this for an XE monster. You can once per turn detach material and summon a raw peer from it, right? The XE material, the XE monster that you make with a red peer gains that effect. So if you have one, this effect doesn't do anything because you can't summon itself while it's under the XE, right? But if you have two, then raw peer can at least summon one more, which would help Zodiac to some extent if Zodiac can even be called an archetype with so many cards being hit. Um, next one, Broadbull is banned in every format and the fact that it's relevant effect, right, the last one, once per turn, detach one material, add one Beast Warrior monster from your uh, deck to your hand, right? Obviously that can be normal summoned or set, sure. So there's some limitations to that, but uh, yeah, it's a soft once per turn and it's any, so it's not even limited to the Zodiac archetype. I think Broadbull can stay banned for a bit more, uh, but we can take a look at Dryden. Dryden to one, I mean, it's at one mass tool. Not sure about the OCG, but it sees occasional play, but that's about it. Obviously here, again, if you don't know, once per turn, quick effect, detach one material from this card, target one card on the field, destroy it. 
uh, yeah, ask Yubel or Snake Eye players if they would mind their cards being destroyed. Uh, no, they would not. So, uh, yeah, Dryden can come back to 100%. And Barrage is continuous spell that's still banned. And uh, yeah, this one I'm a bit conflicted on, right? Let's read it together. You can target one face up card you control, destroy it. And if you do special summon one Zodiac monster from your deck, that is quite the effect. And then you can use this effect obviously once per turn. That would have been absolutely insane if there was no limitation to that. If this card is destroyed by a card effect, oh, and sent to the graveyard, you can target one Zodiac XD monster you control and attach this as material. Uh, yeah, this card is pretty strong. Uh, it seems to be limiting, but it's actually not. You can do quite a lot with it. Um, but what does Zodiac do in 2024 when we have Snake Eye Ash one card combos? Uh, this card can be at 1 100%. I, I mean, it's just now. Nah. The Zodiac cards are strong, but it's, it's not the same as with Dragon Rulers, right? Where they could all come back to 3 and nothing would happen. I think if we give Zodiac everything back to three, uh, the deck wouldn't, as a pure version, wouldn't do too much, but I think it would be abused some way, uh, again, because of how generic some cards like Broadwall can be. But yeah, I think we can just free up some parts um, for like older players and also to free up the man list a bit more. Next one, Heavy Storm to one. Um, this is not a shocking prediction. I think some people are talking about that. And uh, yeah, I think it's okay. I, I, I think Heavy Storm to 1 is not something that's too shocking. Isn't it also already at 1 in Master Tool? Uh, yeah, it's not doing too much. Uh, there are not many back row decks right now. And removing the back row of like Snake Eye or the um, the Yubel deck, right? It also uh, removes off, uh, removes the, what is it? The equipped monsters for cards like DS Ray, uh, DS Ray, DS Ire, whatever. Uh, my Latin is not great, but yeah, it also removes cards in the spell and trap zone, right? Monsters, right? So uh, yeah, it's 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 something. It destroys your own, which uh, again could be a bit iffy, right? That's always uh, the reason for this card being banned, um, especially in comparison to like harpies. But yeah, I think he heavy storm to one is okay. Uh, we're removing floodgates, so like maybe your argument is like, okay, back row decks are losing their floodgates. Uh, yeah, fuck you. But, uh, yeah, so maybe like as a trade off, you don't uh, unban it. But yeah, I think to one, it's, it's not harming anyone. It's something for the like older boomers to like, hey, that's the card I know. Um, and yeah, that's it. Anyway, next card to be freed is MX Saber Invoker. I'm not too sure about this one. There's a lot of degenerate stuff that you can do with this. Uh, but let's talk about the two level three monsters. What are like level three monsters freely running around in like the meta decks? Some, but not too many. And the next thing is like with the uh, what is it? The uh, warrior players, if there even are any left, losing is old, right? For no reason really. I mean the card is obviously wild, but the deck didn't do shit. Uh, like the warrior piles, Mikanko. Mikanko, right, would be would be something here, but actually it's an Earth Warrior. Uh, so far, if I'm not mistaken, there's no Earth Mikanko, and I mean, there's only one Warrior in Mikanko anyway. So, I don't know, man, they are not the most targets for this. I already talked about this, I think, exactly last year, that this card could be freed, and I think, isn't it legal in... It's legal in one format, I think, either Master Duel or OCG. I think it's OCG, actually and it's not doing anything. Sure, there are degenerate things uh, to be done with this card, but in this year where, again, we have these cards like Snake Eye, Tempai, Yubel, and so on and so on, I think this card could be could be at one to give the warrior players at least something, right? If it, again, like always, if these cards become too problematic, we can always ban them again. Um, and there is a difference between like some cards being obviously uh, a bit too much right like imperial order right unbanning that one for the format was absolutely insane uh right all, all everyone could already tell that that was too too much which i think with cards like dryden grass and uh, uh, invoker i think these cards when they come out everyone's going to be like what and then they're not going to do anything same with protoss and colossus to some extent 
I think Protoss just needs to be banned because first of all it sees some play in top top decks and the next thing is again it's a floodgate right there's a difference between cards like what is it snow right snow and uh, obviously in uh, tier limits was quite something uh, not the best <laughs> time for it to be uh, freed from the ban list uh sure but uh, like this like snow is just very strong and it's generating advantage and this and that but it's not a floodgate right there's a difference between a card blocking you out of play and a card generating advantage for your opponent uh the the what is it the level of unfun being created is obviously quite different anyone my brother link Goribo, that guy can be freed as well right if a snake eye is like they're just doing the same thing uh they're linking off into moon they're linking off into anima link Goribo, the ban was just silly i mean sure it's one of the best uh, link one options, but it's like, hey, uh, just, uh, hey. Next one. Free Kit Kalos. Free my girl. Hey, bring her back. Uh, but yeah, for real. I mean, hey, Tierlements is doing nothing really. I think in the last month, there was one Tierlements top, like, throughout all of the TCG, and one Tierlements top throughout all of the OCG, if I remember uh, my. Uh, research correctly um so yeah i mean kit Kalos is a very strong card for a relatively strong archetype <clears throat> but uh yeah the cards are nearly all at one uh, all the millers are banned they were banned uh earlier this year for no reason whatsoever because tier was like still not doing shit uh and uh, yeah, now they have the Fiendsmith card, which like helps some tier versions to some extent. I'm not too sure if it's the best tier version, but it's something. Uh, but if Beatrice is getting banned, then like the advantage from that is also gone. Sure, there is like this, uh, can you see him? This uh, Grim Reaper looking ass guy, uh, who is like a rank six mil five. So if they ban Beatrice, that is like one option for tier players. But uh, I mean, hey, uh, just bring that kit, man. Tillamans also becomes such a better deck with kit uh, like available, right? The deck is just less gamba, less just hey mill, less like spam out bodies and like link off into like generic link cards. It becomes more controlled. It becomes more fusion focused, and I think we can all agree that that's just a better version of the deck to play and to play against. Hey, and also from the Konami's perspective. Um, the tier limits cards have again not been reprinted once uh, in quotation marks right there was the OTS print uh, all the way back then with Rhino and uh, the girls in super rare that's it no other reprint for them the other power of the element cards like sprite kurikara exosisters uh, ultimate slayer and like whatever else that i'm missing right garura right they have been all reprinted at some point even multiple times but tier has not been reprinted since and if we can trust konami which i hope they're going to be in the tins and very shiny versions yes i'm going to buy them all um and yeah you could just put kit in there as well and free kit put her to one um it's going to help right also if you want to move away from fire decks uh if you make tier elements more viable uh tier still has a big fan base right um bless you all and yeah then you the players would love to play tier so less players play fire more play tier it's going to help the format i think to some extent as well because uh again like as much as you want to complain about tier elements being way too strong uh the tier format was not like stun reliant if we ignore dweller um so if you're playing against tier right if it's not a tier zero tier format then cards like dweller are not going to be all that prevalent and then it's just going to be fun tier interacting with your deck and hopefully you have played or you are playing an interactive deck as well. So I think Kit Kalos to one is not completely unreasonable. Tier element uh, like has suffered enough. Next up, a glow up bulb also at one in the OCG. Uh, also not doing all too much of everything uh, or anything, whatever. And uh, yeah, three cards from the ban list. Maybe like Sprite Elf. Uh, yeah, I think I'm reaching with this one. Sprite, Runix and uh yeah also tier elements right with merly i guess uh yeah could abuse sprite elf a bit too much maybe it's not time yet 
I would like to. I would like to. I think uh, sure he's strong. And if we're nuking the current format, then maybe in the power vacuum, this card could be a bit too much. But uh, yeah, I think Sprite Elf is not as unreasonable as people say. Uh, it's a very strong card, yes. But just because the card is very strong doesn't mean uh, it's degenerate, doesn't mean it's ban worthy, but it's creating unfun game states, right? Which is, I think, what we should be on the lookout for. Next, uh, yeah, 100% Summon Sork is coming back. She's going to be errated, right? She's already errated in the OCG. She's already back there. Uh, I think she could be in the tins even, right? They are going to release the uh, errated version of the card and the tins are just, uh, yeah, right after the ban list to some extent, right? Uh, so summon Sork to one, I think that is something that is not too far-fetched. Uh, Verti Anaconda, again, I think the card was banned in the format where <laughs> DPE was just running rampant and sure some people are going to play Verte with DPE again but uh, yeah DPE um, yeah in the current format DPE destroying your UBL cards hmm? you're sure about that one yeah so uh, honestly I think this could come back uh, people are not going to play DPE engine uh, at the same time and also like uh, Dragoon engine no it's, people are just not going to play it Look at Master Duel, no one plays this card, it's just, nah. And it's going to help some low level decks again, right? This is just the same as always. Next, uh, we can talk about Pendle cards. I am not the biggest Pendle enjoyer. I just recently built my uh, like first Pendle decks, right? Obviously Melodious, if you count that as a Pendle deck. And then I've been uh, testing with, uh, what is it, Sulfur Cord? But I'm just not getting the. I'm just not getting it really. Uh, so yeah, Pendle. There's a reason why it's completely unplayable dog shit. Uh, right? Maybe we don't need to put everything to three, but unlimiting at least one of them. Right? Hushfire or the Electromite. Uh, I think one of them, and it's going to be Electromite. I think uh, because like it's as a generic ex generic extra deck monster, it's just going to help the deck uh, or the deck right the pendulum piles uh, a bit more and uh yeah it's i think legal and master duel it's helping the decks there is it going to be unreasonable and stupid uh, well not much more than a pendulum already can be if it's allowed to pop off but uh yeah i i don't think pendulum is going to do as much as more and yeah the few pendulum enjoyers well, okay are going to enjoy uh having their one electromite and then lastly um yeah, the Armageddon Knight uh, can stay right here in the three category because that card is not doing anything at one, two, whatever, and uh, has not been doing that much for, I think, like 10 years or so. It feels like that at least. Uh, sure, the card is cool. Send a Dark Monster from your deck. Dark Monsters are getting ever better, right? Ask me with my tier elements. But uh, yeah, like I would never play Armageddon Knight to a normal summon to mill a name. Uh, that's just a mob dragon or whatever man uh, it's just it's just nothing so uh yeah i think i'm again a knight can go to three right uh if we are not getting back the mx saver invoker at least give something to the warrior players like i remember back then uh warrior was such a good type who the fuck cares about warrior monsters right now who's playing rota or some stuff like that the fact that rota is at one bonfire is at three and puro has been the best type or best type for the last eight months <laughs> it's like ay, ay, ay. uh yeah but uh, that's about it hopefully the video uh, can be cut down by me because it's it's been too long but uh yeah again don't forget to flame me in the comments call me all kinds of names and share your objectively better list as well with me let's talk and uh yeah let's be somewhat civil or let's not hey rage is fun as well anyway hope you take care hope the ban list turns out well Free Kid Kalos, and we see each other next time. Bye bye, my friends.